What's up YouTube, Knight's Edge here again. Um, doing a little quick review of the Spyderco uh, Indela. This is uh, part of the Japanese leg of the Spyderco World Tour. Been trying to do a little, um, kind of like a uh, country by country overview review of uh, all my Spyderco knives. And uh, this is the Delica. Or not the Delica, I'm sorry. The Andela. Anyway, um, <clears throat> this knife's been out for a few years. They've kind of come between, uh, I guess what you would say is an in-between knife between the Delica and the Endura. And this is called the Andela. So it's kind of like the uh, in-between size. Now, I don't have an Endura or a Delica to compare it to. But from everything I've seen, it's essentially the same knife, just a different size. Anyway, um, this one here is the, this one came out a few years back. This is the K390 version of it. The K390 on the blade there. We'll go over what that is and the differences and all that good stuff here in a minute. Um... This is also another Indela. This is actually the first one that I got. And the blade steel on that one's VG10. We'll go over that here in a minute too, whenever we get to blade steels. But that's a Warncliffe, really aggressive Warncliffe. A lot of people like Spyderco's uh, kind of ultra aggressive Warncliffs for their uh, cutting, their cutting capacity, cutting uh, sliciness, you know. Which this one slices plenty good, but the Warncliffe is kind of on another level. So anyway, uh, just for the purposes of this review, I really like the K390 one better. Plus that's kind of like the standard version of it. So I'm just going to use that, but I'm going to keep this up here just to, just to remind everybody that that's a, also a Indela and also an available option so go ahead and do size comparisons well I guess I go ahead and do measurements before I do size comparisons overall you're looking at right at about eight inches tip of the blade to the end of the uh, handle right at eight inches on that uh, cutting edge or blade length rather Looking at three and a half inches on the blade length, and right at uh, go all the way to the tip there. I'd say right at three and an eighth on your uh, yeah, right about three and an eighth on your cutting edge for that. Same thing for that one. You can see that that's essentially the same. Overall is the same anyway. Um, cutting edge on that one, uh, possibly, well, I don't know, might be identical actually. No, uh, right at three and eighth on that one too. So, even though it's a different blade shape, the cutting edge kind of remains about the same. Do the calibers here. Alright, so, thickest part, thickest part of the spine right there, looking at 86 thousandths. Cutting edge all the way down, 20 thousandths there. Oh, the fattest part of the belly on the cutting edge. And right around 25 thousandths there. Uh, handle thickness. Uh, about uh, three fifths of an inch, or no, what is that? About four fifths of an inch. No, I don't know. Keeps going up and down. Let me zero these things out again, real quick. Turn it off and on. All right, so. 
under half an inch, you're looking at right at 0.41 for your handle thickness. That's not bad, especially for the the uh, length of the knife that you're getting. You know, you're getting a uh, cutting edge of three and an eighth and blade length of three and a half, so that's not bad. Go ahead and do hardware. Um, this one got a T8 here, I believe, for the pivot. T8 for the pivot. Yeah. Pivot's T8. I think everything else is T6. So I'm going to double check. <clears throat> yeah. T6. T6 body clip or clip screws T6 so clip screws are T6 also uh, while we're talking about the pocket clip it's ambidextrous so you can mount it uh, tip up right hand carry tip up left hand carry tip down right tip down left move the pocket clip wherever you want this is an aftermarket clip by Lunch Northwest which I kind of prefer over the standard um, Spyderco clips uh, Lynch Northwest makes pretty much every Spyderco aftermarket uh, uh, an aftermarket clip for every Spyderco knife they got. Um, I haven't owned a Spyderco yet that Lynch Northwest doesn't make a clip for. So, got the uh, calipers done. Go ahead and do size comparison before I get off on a tangent here. We'll do the cold steel. I'll put that one back straight. Do the cold steel 8010. 8010 a lot bigger. Demco 8020.5. This is bigger than the 8020.5. Ritter Hogue. Doug Ritter, RSK MK1, Ritter Hogue. A little bit bigger. Um, overall length, uh, with the butt of it right here, it's actually a little bit longer than that, but the Ritter Hogue has a tad bit more cutting edge on it, it looks like, yeah. And let's see what else we got here. Hogue Deca. I'm just going to line the pivots up. And that's the best way to tell. Yeah, hug deca smaller. I would say what what uh, while I got that out, I guess I would say I would compare the Delica to the Hogue Deca and the Indela to the uh, Ritter Hogue. Be a good comparison there. And paramilitary two. A spider co knife. Pair of three. Again, uh, about the same thing. You're looking at more of a full size knife with your paramilitary two, and um, the pair of three is a little bit smaller. Not a crazy uh, compact knife or anything, but smaller than the Indela. The Delica is, uh, from what I've seen, pretty comparable to the pair of three as far as size ratios goes on that. So, get out the scale, see how much these weigh. And I'm just going to go ahead and get specs, all the specs out the way while I'm, while I'm at it. And then we can talk about the knife itself and the blade steels and everything. So, looking at a weight on it, 3.1 ounces. 3.1 ounces, that's for your K390 regular Indela. Look at the um, Warncliffe Indela. 3.2 ounces, that's interesting. Huh. Well, this is just a tad bit more. That's odd, I don't know why. Maybe uh, the worn clips actually got a little more steel with the blade. I don't know. Huh. 
It's uh, first time realizing that for sure. Go ahead and turn the scale off, put it up. All right, put these back in line right there. And the last thing I guess I could do, go ahead and do carry profile. Or forget that too. Now this is with the aftermarket clip. So with the Lynch Northwest aftermarket clip, deep carry clip, you can't see anything hardly. Yeah, just a hair sticking up a little bit not really visible right there so pretty much just a clip now with the spider coat clip the uh stock clip that comes with the knife got a pretty good bit sticking up all right that's why i like the deep carry clip one of the reasons why but uh yeah spider co pretty much stock with uh i went not all but uh a lot of spider co's i'd say the majority of them come stock with this spoon bill uh kind of clip here i don't know anybody that really loves it it's not a terrible clip but it's also not anything to really write home about as far as pocket clip goes on knives so um that's all the specs and thoughts on the Indela. I'd say um, overall, really good knife. Uh, fairly outdated. I, I would I would call it outdated. I'd, I'd venture out, even though I'd absolutely love it. Love Spyderco. You know, I would venture out to say that the Indela is a bit outdated, just like the Delica and the Endura. But that being said. Um, outdated is you know fairly loose term so the steel on this one is definitely outdated especially for the price now these things are running right at a hundred bucks a little over a hundred bucks and um in this version you know you can get the worn cliff or the um drop point leaf shape pelican beak whatever uh blade shape you know normal standard spider code blade shape uh you can get this or that blade shape in VG10 steel. VG10 for right around 100 in the high 90s, around 100 bucks. That's pretty high for uh, VG10. You know, there's a lot of companies, Civivi, uh, shoot, CJRB, uh, a lot of companies out there that are doing higher quality steels for for less than 9500 bucks you know um especially in 2024 for 9500 bucks something in that price range you know you're almost looking at being able to get like s35 vn or s30v or something like that you know so that is the outdated part to me of the knife um the design's a classic you know uh Zal glesser designed this in-house that says maker mark maker's mark on there sal glusser spider co-founder um designed this knife himself great design has stood the test of time been around for many years you know even before the indela came out you know he had that design in the uh in the delica and you know which is the small one and the enduro which is the huge one so uh definitely a design that stood the test of time but as far as the design itself you know i mean you nowadays you know i mean that a lot of uh companies have kind of paid more attention and gotten better and better and better through the years with uh listening to their customer base and improving on stuff so the uh ergonomics i would say is one thing that they could use an improvement on this now it is nowhere near a bad knife ergonomically it's really comfortable actually whenever you grip it like this you know and this this grip and even if you put your index finger kind of here on this flat right here um but you know whenever you do that you're pretty close to the cutting edge so that, that's a thing you definitely gotta watch for the jimping on here helps the hump classic spyderco uh kind of hump right there above the opening hole thumb hole helps you know but 
nowadays uh not you know depending on the company and all that and even spyderco themselves with a lot of their newer models you know they can consider the the finger choil you know a, a thing you know so this isn't doesn't really have a finger choil um other than that the thickness of it it feels good in hand it's definitely a knife you know whenever you got it in this position gripped like that you definitely know you, you know you're, you're hanging on to it and and uh kind of the backwards position is is pretty good i like the texturing of this frn it's really aggressive whenever you first get it um i don't know if that kind of comes off I wouldn't even know what to call that. Kind of like sideways triangles slash, uh, I don't know, squares, slants, or whatever. You can see how they kind of swoop up right there. They're, they're pretty grippy while not being totally, uh, you know, they don't hurt your hand. They're not totally uncomfortable. When you first get it, it is fairly rough. Now, what I like to do, and you know, can't really recommend everyone, but what I what I do, whenever I get a Spyderco knife that has an FRN handle, is take you know some uh, really high grit emery cloth, you know, sandpaper, and just kind of go over it a little bit, you know, may, maybe even that much on each side. Just to kind of sand down these sharp edges that are that are on here, but uh, not too much. You know, I mean, it doesn't really need it that much. Uh, it's not a necessity, but to me, it makes it a little more comfortable. Um, also, as I mentioned before, it's ambidextrous, tip up, tip down carry, back lock, perfectly secure lock, great lock, good locking mechanism for this knife. Uh, liners are kind of skeletonized out you know you get some liners inside of there but um, the majority of the handle material on this knife is uh, FRN which is fiberglass reinforced nylon now this version I prefer because of that K390 steel it's taken me 17 minutes to get to it but uh K390 is amazing. That's why I bought this version. That's the only reason I own this knife is, uh, you know, because I bought this one first. VG10, not so hot. You know, I mean, it's, uh, it is stainless. It's more stainless than K390. So that's a good thing. But the edge retention, you know, I mean, you can cut a few pieces of rope and whatever, uh, boxes open few boxes open you know some rope whatever little bit of cutting i would say and then you start to definitely notice that edge on the vg10 to um uh, starting to dull and it loses an edge quick the k390 on the other hand while it isn't as stainless as the vg10 um kind of you can kind of see that uh that patina that it's got on there kind of almost like a yellowish goldish kind of hue to the metal compared to the other one. I don't know if you can actually, if I'm getting it on the camera or not. But that is from uh, weatherization, pretty much. You know, I mean, it's not as as uh, corrosive resistant as the uh, VG10, but the edge retention is a story with this steel. K390 will cut and cut and cut and cut and cut and cut a crazy amount. It will hold an edge for a very long time. It is not insanely hard to sharpen. I've sharpened this knife one time. Um, not very hard to sharpen at all. The only reason I sharpened it actually was because the edge bevels coming from Spyderco were uneven. So I kind of evened out the edge bevels on it. But uh, yeah, the, the K390 is just a monster as far as a cutting steel. I, I would rank it uh, right up next to 15V, which is the best steel, in my opinion, of all time as far as edge retention. K390 holds an edge just about that good. Not quite as good, but almost as good as 15V. Um, the price difference in these two, this one's running right around 135 bucks right now. Um, I'll link it in the description of the video. So for, you know, going from in the mid nineties, 
right around the mid 90s to low hundreds for this one to you know 140 bucks or so for this one that's kind of uh, a big price hike but what you're paying for there is everything's the same i mean the color is different on the frn you know you get the light blue here but the k390 steel is pretty much what you're paying for and it is in my opinion well worth it now i would love to have and they do make other spyderco models with the k390 um it's not as common as these three you know the the delica the andela and the endura that kind of uh series of three knives you know i mean they also have the stretch the dragonfly the ladybug all those other ones that are in k390 and you can tell really fast because they got this uh which ones are in k390 because they got this kind of light blue uh faded light blue handle frn handle on all of them but i would like to see it myself more so in in something along the lines of like the paramilitary too but uh which they did make it and they, they do have them uh paramilitary twos in k390 and other spider co models in k390 but they're not as easy to find not as uh commonplace as the delica and della endura family of knives so long story short i would definitely recommend this knife but only if you're getting the k390 version this is not a terrible knife i'm not trying to down on the uh the design of the Indela, you know, um, for how long it's been around, the Delica, the Indela, and the Endura, I'm kind of grouping them all in one, you know, with design. But uh, for how long it's been around, they're, they're, they've lasted and kind of stood against time, you know. But with the price hikes and everything, I would not recommend paying, or, you know, anywhere near $100 for this knife. And that's what they're kind of wanting for it right now. 90 to to 100 bucks or so is about the average, uh, if I'm remembering right. And uh, this one, for the little bit of extra money, you know, 30 40 extra bucks, I would say this one I would recommend. This is, uh, in my opinion, a great knife, you know. And... If you're looking at them online, if you're looking to buy one, you know, they've got plenty of different sizes. The, like I said before, they've got the, the ladybug, uh, the ladybug, the man bug, the UK pen knife, the, um, uh, dragonfly, and all those are smaller, you know, and then they got the delica, they got the indella, and that just moves up from there and they got the enduro which is bigger and then they got the police and the stretch too and you know they got uh which i believe has like over a four inch blade it's, you know which is crazy but um yeah that that would be uh this one was kind of like my perfect size you know that's why i got this one so definitely like it definitely would recommend this one for sure 100 percent, pretty good knife and uh the steel is like i said what takes the cake on this one but that's about it um spiderco and della i'll have the link down below if you guys want to check it out this is the night's edge i appreciate you guys watching it. it means so much please like the video if you like it subscribe to the channel if you want more content i do appreciate everything and every single minute that you guys watch my content and Please come back for more. Thank you very much.